time ever. <laughs> Literally a Xeno first in the most mundane of ways. <laughs> a Xeno first, where it Dill doesn't do a button check and we can't run ads for like five seconds. It's okay. Oh, no. It's We're fine. Over a smash I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm not crying inside. <laughs> My day isn't ruined. It's fine. It's fine. Now we get to watch Dill and Jin square off after a interesting Xeno 249, but it's it's these two inevitably. A House of 3K member against a one of the strongest New York has seen, period. Yeah, and one of the strongest. Palu is one of the strongest in New York. I'll say even in Tri-State as well. You know, yeah. Jen has been grinding, as I've been saying, and we st the effort is being seen as we uh, go through our final match of the day. Yeah, just sticking on Smashville here, which is a new starter for uh, for the vibe. No small battlefield, no PS2, small space, the lasers covering full stage. But Palu has access to basically instant teleport cancels wherever she wants them. And Jen is ideally going to use them to great uh -oh. effect. But the gyro and the lasers, you have the distance. But the intercept could have been dared, but Dill was just a little too early on the trigger. I actually thought Jen was almost UFO. too far to come back, but... Oh, you're okay. <laughs> if we had hazards on the stage, everyone would be dying to popping balloons and then getting punished for it. You're right. Because I, I would do that. You guys follow in the background and charging up the us smash and the bottom hit two frame of the us smash, negating those recovery and getting Jen that first stock of the night. That up smash is just so good and it stuffed out the route that Dill had chosen. Uh, leaving Jen at max, or leaving Jen at max rates to do something with, and Dill said, yeah, the something you're doing is dying. So, <laughs> we're gonna thing you're doing is dying. Yeah, you know? we're going on. We're moving. I was there. <laughs> I was there before you even. My arm order was in your face I before was, you even there. landed in the hitbox. Like, don't even play with me. I like this bit. It's fun. It's a good bit. It's an amazing bit. <laughs> they're both already. They're literally already there. They're in all seriousness. These two players have such really like good coordination of where their moves are going to go and expecting what their outcome is going to do according to how they play them in the past and how the character typically wants to be played. Right. That it's a game of quite literally who's more big brain. Honestly. Yeah. You gotta you gotta unlock that extra the extra little notion, those ideas of like, alright, this is what Dill does and I'm gonna counterplay what she does by being where she wants to be. Yep. But the ledge play gets uh, gets evolved and gets more dangerous every single time. The up tilt, great DI sent, changing the angle tremendously, getting the double jump, avoiding the armor with the back air. But the stocks survive on both sides here. Couple up airs to threaten into a dash after catch the landing. No jump on the part of Dill, and you're running low on fuel as well. Just trying to get above stage, but the up yeah. kill. Like you, it's a great idea. Like I get above stage so that Dill can uh, can come down and still kind of like and can come down and land and take hits while she does so. Yeah. But you can only take so many of Palu's up airs, and she's so fast. She can cover so much ground. And that's for so long as well, you know. And she can kind of maneuver around it. She goes everywhere with those up airs, and we've seen it earlier in the first game between these two, uh, where Palu up air just completely negates. Rob's high recovery. It, it sucks for Rob in general. And Jen refuses to die. 148%, 156%, and counting. Just coming back with a teleport. Jaro, once again, not going to take that, but maybe a throw. Yes, absolutely. 80% on Dill. Uh, full laser and a gyro. Not quite at the ready, but just will be out pretty instantaneously. Almost getting the drive mount up air, which would have been would have been pretty sick. Just trying to space out with some of these forward airs, though. Jen. Attempting to play to his lead, but things got dangerous real quick. The jump was used in order to make sure they could get to ledge very safely. The down airs, oh, but the coverage from oh, Dill. Yeah. Like, you are not allowed to neutral get up, and you don't even think about jumping, don't even think about recovering high, and don't even think about recovering there the ledge is. either. That's game Nothing. one to Dill. Great. That whole sequence just starting from when Jen was off the stage trying to recover with a teleport, and. First, good on Jen just for kind of uh, making sure not to uh, go right into the deals there. Great. But then, that's the start of your downfall, because now you're stuck in this constant loop of gyro la laser, gyro laser into the arm rotor. 
off the stage, knowing exactly you're not going to be close enough to get to that ledge, but I'm going to jump a little bit off the ledge, and you will get caught in this humongous hitbox. Absolutely. And it's such good... It was a good adaptation from a whiffed edge guard, whiffed similar edge guard yeah. earlier in the game, where it's like, oh, I mistimed the fair to hit that exact angle. Well, I'm going to remove the timing aspect. This hitbox will linger here until you get hit by it. We're running it straight back eventually, to Smash. You will. Farther you push Palu out, she will be hitting that hit that hitbox eventually. Yeah. Absolutely. So we we may have a long grand finals on our hands if Dill keeps playing at the level she is at currently. But it was a close game nonetheless. And Jen running it right back, but same thing with Smashville. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's Jen's motto. Uh oh, you're gone. And that's death. Yeah. Yes. And oh. another death. The S. Oh, oh, the self-destruct, the self-KO, the falling robot. And that's going to take all the wind out of your sails. And now, the confidence boost you had in those good little five seconds after the KO, and then you just can't recover. Did she run out of gas? No, or she just... uh, she missed input side B, ah, which is, okay, yeah, you're gone. Yeah, that's really unfortunate for, uh, for Dale. However... It's not the end of the world, you know? Not no. technically, but in a positive way, you're back to even. Yes, yes. You know? No right. one's in clear it, it, advantage. It a... Not you, but at least not them as well. So, and we're seeing Dill just take that and giving it to her stuff that advantage day as she takes the second stock from Jen with a really clean forward smash. The hovery. Man, the hovery. Setups from Dill and like the ledge play, which was so strong from Jen in, the set, in all the sets that we've seen them play. They uh, they seem like they're floundering on a ledge like this. It's shout out to Sage. Oh no! Because you're losing access to what you're losing access to the control that Jen was able to exude in those games. It's like when when Jen was in a position of advantage, it was those hit boxes and those the lingering hit boxes and the coverage that would be so strong. But Dill's waiting them out and punishing for it now. But if he holds block, then she gets access to double jump gyro toss or double jump nair, which are both safe on block and thus allow Dill to get get back to stage for free. Well, and then on the flip side, when Jen was trying to find ways to come back, those high recoveries put in so much work, but not anymore because those high recoveries got killed in game one. So try to go to ledge and play the ledge game. You're also dying. Like she's there. Yeah, I've, I just... Like, just a total deconstruction of what one gen the first set was ripped apart and used to Dill's advantage in the second. And good for her as well. Absolutely. Know? Absolutely good for her. That, that's called Amazing play. adaptation. For sure. The exact word for it, even. Yep. <laughs> so y'all got to just, we gotta just adapt to the situation at hand, which is what Dill's doing perfectly. Perfect example of adaptation. But now we're going over to FD. We are now in true finals. Uh, another, you know, best of three situation. Jen, hopefully he's able to, will hopefully uh, take what he learned in that first game. All right. Oh. Jen. Dill Wait. is out for blood. Dill wants first. Did Dill do, like, the, uh, the winner's set conditioning where it was just like, okay. And now I will side B. And now I will like, side B. And now how many stocks? Uh, three at this point. Three, four. Everyone keeps they, they either get caught on it as they're trying to recover, or she just drags into a blast zone with it. That could have been five. If that nair connected, that was a fifth and a half. Like if you're taking a shot for every side B, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, y'all stay safe out there. It's a it's a week it's a weekday. Yeah, no. it's a, it's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. That's a that's a work day. That's oh. why we run best of three. House loves us, is what I'm hearing. Yeah, it's true. Correct. Still, this is a lot go. of... I mean, it just go, it shows how powerful Gyro is. Like, losing control of Gyro can mean you're losing control of stage and you're losing a stock as well. Jen has, has the very least an opportunity here, but that neutral guy gets punished with, a, uh, with its own neutral guy out of shield. Jen controlling stage. But Dill gets back and is able to refresh all of those, all of that fuel, Catching all of those match. resources. But the uh, up tilt two doesn't connect, and now she's swinging. And I, but I was gonna mention that um, just acknowledging Dill's um, awareness of Jen's up tilt as well. I'm, I'm sorry, up air as well. Just now she's not getting hit by it whatsoever when she's trying to cover high. 
Jen has to now work, put in a lot of work, you know, using the gyro to his advantage whenever he can, making sure that does not have it in uh, in her arsenal. Like, just like that, now he has a great for Jar to Jar to recharge, and now we have Jen a little bit in, in the vanish state, taking the deal over to the ledge, and then just coming up with an up air and taking that second stock. And Jen, oh, Jen still has two stocks, thankfully. This is now a, um, looking up for Jen this time, instead of the first two games we saw that were, were kind of scary looking. But the coverage that Jen is starting to produce here, with a lot of strong responses out of shield and just outspacing Dill in a position where she can only go so far. Like holding le uh, hovering below ledge and then double jumping only gets you so far on stage. So Jen has been blocking in there. Then jump back forward. Air. That is gonna is gonna close out with a kill off of a full, off of a down throw, but. Jen has firmly supplanted themselves back into the driver's seat after losing control massively in, in the previous, uh, in the grand final set. True finals is slightly a different story right now, but there is still plenty of room for error, especially with a gyro in hand and Dill ready to pull the trigger on arm rotor today. <laughs> I know for a fact Dill is fishing for a, a nair into gyro, into nair, into gyro, into another arm rotor off the stage. Uh -oh. We're seeing the setup a little bit, uh, a little bit often now. And we have just a down no tilt. No way. Yeah, absolutely not. This is flame negate, uh, making Dill have to recover a little bit more to uh, the right as she wants to, and setting up for a low back air. Princess. That's the first set of three going to Jen. And I think this this position right here can highlight just such a a dangerous a dangerous dance that these two have played. So I'm gonna. Wind it back like 10 frames, right? Yeah. All right. So right here, Dill, Dill loves to do this whole, and you see it a billion times. Dill loves to do the double jump offensive option and play that. But standing right here, Jen has decided, okay, I'm not going to do anything fancy. I'm not going to try and do preemptive aerials. I'm just going to hold block and react. And then you can come up, and I'm just going to yeah. short hop back here. Yeah, I'll either hit you. react to you doing that double jump, like gyro toss, double jump nair, or double unfair. I'll react to that, or I'll react to you grabbing ledge, and I'll drop shield, and we're back in the same spot. Like, it's such a, it's a simple little twist of like, hey, in game, in the first set, I was overcomplicating things and getting overwhelmed by Dill unlocking this new age of her punish game. But I'm not gonna let that get to me, because I got set two, and I can just wind it back a little bit. Of course, going to Battlefield here, Dill hasn't been touched. So, and, and almost close out the stock after not being touched for the entire time. So, like, these two players are just kind of bouncing back and forth from each other. Like you were mentioning, Monty, just they have so much history that you have to legitimately find new ways to one-up each other. And there's only so much you can do with knowing the character itself. Now you have to know how your, how your opponent plays a character that you have to deal with. And just like that, falling there, not going to quite take it quite yet. And Jen is going to die from this top. No, not quite. I'm blasters. surprised. Yeah, no, good. Yeah, those blasts go kind of crazy, you know? They're quite sizable, and the old shield react. It can uh, force, the, force the option, then hold that shield. Play out of block and see what Dill does about it. As the coverage and the damage is starting to get to its maximum, that fair comes out just in the nick of time, though, and oh, this should no. be a closeout yeah. stock. Yeah. Oh, her scream. Bestie. <laughs> <laughs> was never oh. that serious. Oh, and Jen just evening up right, right then again. Up air, just don't even worry about it. Jen was yeah, there right. with it. I know, I'm loving the amount of space that these kids are, that these, uh, both these players are taking with one another, knowing that they're, oh, oh, this is exactly what we're looking for with the fall with the Nairs into uh, gyro setups, that Dill is trying to do to gain an easy 40-50% on her opponent, and unfortunately, Jen can do the exact same thing back, you know, uh, with Palu's multi-hits and her Nair and her up air, the, the, a, the ability for both these people to just go back and forth and keep this toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe game is incredible and super entertaining to watch. 
extremely so. Yeah. yeah, and I'm just loving the control Jen is having across the entire stage right now. Center stage, uh, at the edge, and getting a hard read with the air dodge into the forest smash. And that's that, that's the ticket, right? When you can when you can play Palutena and, have, and exert all of that control over the stage and over the pacing of the game, then you can turn some of those little air dodge reads that you'll get, like maybe an up air four, maybe a neutral air four. You can turn those into forward smashes. But wow, that stock was closed out on with sheer coverage on Dill's part as we move into. Uh, we were at Dill's last stock of potentially of the tournament, in which Jen could win right now. But we may have a, another game left in our belts if Dill can just perform one of those crazy gyro combos. But it's able to turn into Jen's advantage state on uh -oh. battlefield like this. It's like this, Jen. Like we said earlier, we, we thought these platforms were a little bit in Jen's way, but now Jen's exhibited that this is not these do not matter. Jen will chase still around these platforms very easily with uh with Palo's mobility in the air. So such a great advantage that he has. But right now we do see Dill in a really good advantage state right now, catching the up tilt into the up air, not taking the stock, however. Yeah, that would have been it with Bad DI. Yeah. Oh bad, <laughs> we even talk bad, about bad, bad DI, you're gone. DI? Doesn't even apply. They, we already know. Great D on these players, as always. Keeping Jen alive for just a little bit longer, like a more percentage on Dill, and Ooh. possibly not take it with the up air off the top of the blast zone there. Maybe another read, hard read, possibly down to into uh, just a forward air. Not, not enough time to get into the turnaround quite yet, but Dill, uh, with Dill on ledge. Oh, the pressure with the double jump back air, Jen. Feeding and there's a flip off the oh. stage, catching her right against the blast zone. Which I want to say, Jen has not been using that as often in this matchup just because they've been so like neck and neck. I don't even think Dill was expecting an expect explosive flame all the way up there out into the blast zone where she was trying to recover safely. Yeah, a lot of the time yeah. the explosive flame uh, would be put out uh, on ledge. Uh, yeah. just, like, just standing there throughout the explosive flame or if uh, when seeing Dill go low. And we saw it a lot when, against John, but Jen that time using the, the easily accessible platforms to chase with that far reaching special and I mean it's huge. Like, it's such a it's such a good play to, to have in your back pocket when Dill like had a huge lead. It was like one thirty three to fifty and then turns it into a one thirty three percent game winning grand finals take true finals taking true finals. Jennifer closing out Zeno number two hundred and forty nine. Nine. <laughs> we did it! We did. <laughs> Basic math, oh my gosh. That's the end of right. Xeno Weekly uh, 249. I'm Austin Neville. You can follow me on Twitter. Sure. I'm Austin Neville with an, extra, with an extra A. Extra A. And you can follow Ubo over on the right same there. platform on Twitter, Ubo Soul. And always, please, please, please follow House 3000 on Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube. You can watch every single VOD from each stream that was streamed today on YouTube right now. Go do that. They're please. right there. It's right there. It's right there. And really quickly, zoom quickly. Every Wednesday, venue eight dollars, entry seven dollars. Twenty one little street near, near one thousand two. Huh? Uh, uh, yeah, oh. like you can check out the Xeno Weeklies. Yeah. They happen every single Wednesday here. Uh, at tweet the stream at House of Three Thousand. All of the updates happening at, at House of Three Thousand, and you make sure that you keep in mind and keep a lookout for Blackout NYC happening at the New Yorker Hotel, November twenty fifth through twenty seventh. It's going to be in the Heart NYC, immediately accessible from Penn Station. Early Bird ends on August 1st, and players like Shutan, Kome, DeBuzz, Leon, Zamba, Dark Wizzy, Ling, Base Mage, Tilde, so many killers are already registered. Why aren't you? Pre-register, love yourself, love your TOs, love, love your venue, love your registration. Come on now. Pre-reg, August 1st, over in New York City. Come on now. We're, we're going to be here probably. We're like, there. We're, we're there. already there. We, I, we set the venue. <laughs> we made the event. No, okay, let me stop. But <laughs> we'll see you guys next Ch week. Shout out to Chili Man. But yes, Chili Man. <laughs> We'll see you guys next week for Xeno 250. 250. Bye, guys.